Power Colors RX 5700 Red Dragon was the first non-XT 5700 series card that we looked at. And we looked at it mostly for thermals and noise, just like all the other partner models, because the GP performance is mostly covered by the reference card testing. Today we're looking at the RX 5700 Pulse by Sapphire. It's not the XT model. It looks very similar, but it does have some changes to the cooler. So we're going to be looking at that for thermals, acoustics, and uh, frequency performance versus primarily the power color Red Dragon. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's new audio sound card, engineered by AudioNote. EVGA CEO knows high quality audio and has begun bringing sound cards back. The new audio sound card is capable of delivering hair raising audio superior to onboard sound. The card includes a line in, headphone, line out, and mic in, and a Sony Philips digital interface. New audio also leverages EVGA's PCB design experience, has upgradable op amps, and uses AKM premium components for its DAC and ADC. Learn more at the link in the description below. Here's the Pulse. It's supposed to be $360. The Red Dragon card from Power Color is also supposed to be $360. These are supposed to be $350. So you pay a bit more, but you get dual axial cooling, which is good, and 90-ish millimeter fans, and uh, that brings noise levels down significantly while operating at a lower temperature as well. So all positives there. The real question is, as always, is there anything major that a manufacturer has overlooked in the process of putting their card together? So we'll look at thermals for that. And separately, how does it compare relatively to another partner model? Rather than comparing just to the reference card, which is obviously going to lose in these types of benchmarks, we need to look at it versus something else. And we have the power color Red Dragon on the benchmarks for that. For the card itself, the cooler is extremely similar to the Sapphire Pulse, the XT model. We did a teardown of that already. It's on the channel if you want to see it. But uh, basically, there's at least one fewer, uh, one less heat pipe on the top here. And then there's uh, also a difference in the plates. So the cooling plates on the bottom that connect to the uh, base plate or the copper, what, what of a base plate there is. Anyway, there's not much of one of these cards, but it covers the VRM and the memory. Uh, one of the plates there has been removed. We might take this part and look at it as well in a teardown if, you, if anyone cares about it. But those are the changes. Otherwise, it looks the same. It's got the same ID, same fan size, same fans, same fan curve in terms of the PWM to RPM response. It's all the same. So it's the heat pipes and the, the metal solution that has changed on this. But it's also a lower TDP card. And then for the power settings, there's two uh, VBIOS, which is good. Uh, dual VBIOS is always nice to have. And one of them is supposed to be silent mode, one is OC mode. The difference in power consumption for GPU only is about 15 watts. We'll look at those numbers. So one to the next 15 watt difference. And uh, other than that, let's get through the testing. As always, you can find a link uh, below for the article with some additional testing information, like the bench used. But we're just going to focus on thermals and noise for the most part. So let's go through that and then see if it's actually worth buying. Noise normalized GPU thermals are up first. We're starting to fill this chart out now. It still needs more cards as they slowly come in for testing, but we can at least get started with thermals across the Red Dragon, the Sapphire Poles, and the AMD reference cards. Our first chart will show all three devices as normalized to 40 dBA at a 20 inch distance, thus allowing us to better understand the effective cooling efficiency of each cooler when configured to a fixed noise level. Without doing this, you're really just testing the temperature target of each VBIOS which means that whoever has the lowest temperature target and likely the highest, loudest RPM would win the chart, so to speak. We'll look at that too, as it's an important test for the majority of users who do leave their cards auto-controlled, but this gives us a better idea as to the best thermal solution from the designs that we have tested so far. Let's get that chart on the screen. At 40 dBA, the GPU-only thermals for the Sapphire RX 5700 non-XT poles have it at about 68.8 degrees Celsius for GPU edge temperature. Note that unlike our case and cooler reviews, this isn't a delta T over ambient value. Ambient temperature is controlled to 21 degrees Celsius for these tests with any deviation controlled for with modifiers. We log ambient temperature every second with a logging meter at intake so we can account for ambient swings when necessary or if necessary. At 68.8 degrees, the Pulse has a higher GPU edge temperature and temperature target than the power color Red Dragon did at the same noise level. This positions it warmer in edge temperature and in the more important junction temperature values. The junction delta is about four degrees between the two cards when configured to 40 dBA each. Power color is winning in this comparison, although Sapphire's Pulse does hold a significant lead over the reference design. Clearly, with a 20 degree gap at 40 dBA 
versus junction on the blower cooler, or a similarly high gap versus the edge temperature. GDDR6 and VRM thermals are next. For this one, the Pulse and the Red Dragon are so far below the point of concern on either G6 or VRM MOS temperatures that they have become functionally irrelevant. We look at these numbers to see if anyone seriously screws up the cooling on non-GPU components. As seen with the thermal pad choices on some cards we've worked with in both recent and distant past, in this instance, no one's screwed anything up and both improve over the reference design significantly. Our concern with reference is that it's getting hot enough that use in a warm case, especially where the CPU is also producing a heat load, could easily push the GDDR6 temperatures north of 100 degrees if bringing noise levels down with manual fan RPMs. This isn't a concern if left auto-controlled, but it'll be really loud. The Red Dragon and the Pulse aren't anywhere close to danger territory here. At 68 and 72 degrees Celsius GDDR6, the Red Dragon maintains a technical victory, but that's all it is. It's a technical win because it's, well, technically superior, but it's also a meaningless delta between these two. The delta versus reference is meaningful, and both hit that mark. Lower GDDR6 temperatures don't give you better clocks, so all that's important is that it isn't high enough to go north of 100 degrees when used in a warm case with a warm room ambient temperature. And VRM MOSFET temperatures here are so low that it's a completely irrelevant thing to, to look at other than just making sure they didn't mess it up. These cards aren't pushing enough power to drive the MOSFETs that hard, and good cooling solutions further this. The Pulse holds another technical victory in this instance, although nearly error, but it's not meaningful. So it's one point for each of them in this one. The fan response will help us better understand the differences between each VBIOS on the card. The default position is the higher power target VBIOS toward the PCIe cables, whereas the position toward the back of the card is the lower power target configuration. In this test, we see that the fan RPM on each is not any different up until the end. The pulse ends up plotting at about 1450 RPM for each VBIOS option when left to self-regulate versus power and GPU thermal targets. Fan curves will adjust based on GPU temperature, so we like to run some tests without any uh, externally imposed controls to better understand stock behavior. With both fan RPMs at the same speed, one could postulate that GPU temperature is the same. In this instance, though, we see that it's not. The higher power VBIOS plots at about 70 degrees Celsius on average, while the secondary VBIOS runs at about four to five degrees cooler throughout the test, up until the end, where the fan RPM spontaneously dropped off. Upon further inspection, it looks like the temperature was sitting just below the threshold for the next fan speed hike, so maybe that caused the RPM to drop since it wasn't past the next temperature threshold. It could also be, and likely is, a bug relating to the drivers and how they're interacting with the card and the VBIOS, we're not quite sure. We've seen behavior like this on the power color card as well, talked about in the previous review. But in this instance, it fell from 1450 RPM to about 1100 RPM towards the end of the test. This would make sense for a silent BIOS anyway, the last part, the 1100 RPM, but it did not seem to apply until late in the load cycle. It also makes sense that thermals are set to the same 70 degree target, and so a lower power target and lower RPM target would combine to allow the same temperatures, but lower noise, ergo silent naming for the VBIOS. To research this further, we ran another test pass with silent and logged it again just to see if it was a fluke. Behavior was similar at first. You can see the fan ramped to 1450 RPM initially, but it fell to about 1000 RPM after that. The dips to zero are reporting errors in AMD's API and should be ignored. The real takeaway is that the retest shows it is once again closer to 1000 RPM, but it also repeats the boosted fan at the beginning. We observed similar behavior with Power Colors card when we reviewed that, so we're not sure if this is an AMD issue or a VBIOS issue, but we're leaning toward VBIOS since it's something that Power Color thought they could resolve on at least their card. The fan is ramping too aggressively in the beginning of the workload here. GPU temperature is close to the OC BIOS result, as expected because the fan speed's lower, but this is probably how Silent is supposed to behave. It just doesn't seem that consistent at least right now. To explain why the temperature was lower at the same RPM, we can look at this plot of GPU-Z logged power readings. We wouldn't rely on this reading for card-to-card -card power consumption as we can get more accurate numbers with our interposer setup. Critically, this is what the GPUs are looking at when running off of their own power limits. The OCV BIOS is allowed to draw 165 watts for the GPU-only power, ignoring GDDR6 power and VRM efficiency losses, while the silent VBIOS drops down to 150 watts. This 15 watt gap is similar to the power color card's configuration, although the power color card runs 170 watts for OC and 155 for silent. This thermal chart will give the full sweep of auto settings for each VBIOS on 
each of the two cards, plus some reference 5700 numbers and 40 DBA numbers. Scoring by junction temperature first, the Sapphire RX 5700 Pulse and Silent BIOS has the lowest GPU junction temperature, but only when we average during the 1450 RPM fan speed. If averaging after the drop to 1100 RPM, it ends up the same as the OC BIOS thermals. Also note that the Silent BIOS is running at the lowest power target between all four permutations of the AIB partner cards, so it makes sense that it's the coolest. Junction is at 73 for this, with GPU Edge at 64.5. The Power Color Red Dragon at 40 dBA is next, followed by the Pulse at 40 dBA, but we already talked about those results. The Pulse with OC BIOS follows at 79 degrees Junction and 68.7 degrees Edge temperature. This is next, followed by the Red Dragon with its Silent V BIOS, which lowers power target to 155 watts, then the Red Dragon with OC BIOS at 85.4, Junction, that is, and a 170 watt VBIOS allowance. And after all these numbers, it's just the reference card. The GDDR6 and VRM thermals are next for steady state averages. In this one, the only change to the stack is the Red Dragon at 40 dBA and the Pulse with silent VBIOS. Everything else stays in its original hierarchy. No one has exceptionally bad thermals on this chart, although reference is in bad territory with its 88 degree GDDR6 result. And this will become worse again in a case or a warmer ambient environment. The rest, though, is all sort of irrelevant. Frequency over time will be our last set of charts. First, we're looking at just the Sapphire Pulse and its silent versus OCV BIOS options. With the OCV BIOS, frequency averages around 1705 MHz flat, whereas the silent VBIOS runs at about 1670 MHz average, sometimes hitting 1680. The next frequency plot will show comparisons to the reference card and the Power Color Red Dragon 5700 card. The Sapphire Pulse OCV BIOS remains where it was a moment ago, as it's the same data, but the Power Color Red Dragon ends up about 1730 to 1750 MHz, which puts it about 30 to 45 MHz higher on average, while the RX 5700 reference card lands roughly the same as the Pulse's peak line, occasionally crossing over in either direction. That's it for the $360 Sapphire 5700 Pulse. Very straightforward review, not that different from what we saw with the XT in terms of construction, so pretty easy to walk through. Thermally and acoustically, it's doing significantly better than the reference model for versus the, the power color card. It's a bit of a, a harder battle for Sapphire. So power color is in the lead there for thermals on the power color card. It has a higher frequency a bit as well. Very, very slightly higher performance in games as a result. We're talking like one-ish percent, maybe 1.5. So the differences are really just gonna come down to price and availability in your region. Buy whichever one's available. There's, this isn't bad. The power color one's not bad. They're both performing well below the thermal requirements of everything on the card. You have plenty of room to quiet down the fans if you wanted to and still have good thermals. So we're fine with both of these. Power color has a technical victory here for thermals, especially when noise normalized, uh, when they're all at 40 dBA. But that doesn't mean Sapphire is bad. It just means that Sapphire is a couple degrees behind. So in the comparative, Power Color wins. In terms of should you buy it, it's completely fine. If you prefer the look or you uh, can find stock and you can't of the other card in your region, then there's no problem with buying this one. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. And that's a, a positive review from us. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.cameraxis.net to help us out directly, like by buying one of these shirts, the GBU Artifacting shirt, and uh, the mod mats. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. I'll see you all next time.